Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dead Sprint. It is by Rabble Game Studios, two to five players, about 20 to 45 minutes, and it is a racing style game, so to speak. You know those kind of games where you don't necessarily have to be the winner of the race, just as long as everybody else gets eaten before you, or if you want to kick somebody in the shins along the way, that works too. That's basically Dead Sprint. You're going to be playing as a runner, and you're going to be starting on a plat or a road, along with a zombie horde behind you, much like The Walking Dead, how you're having to always run from the horde. In this game, it works the same way. You'll be rolling dice and moving across different locations. You're going to have different straight roads, as well as corner roads that you can choose from, and as you continue throughout the board, eventually the end is going to be near, and if you can get there before anybody else, you're going to win, and everybody else will be eaten. However, zombies are also going to try and stop you from getting there, as well as players. It might be even the case that everyone else just simply dies, and you're the last one alive, in which case you would also win. Be careful though, after everybody's turn, the zombie horde is going to move across the board, and if it picks you off, you're gone forever. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at Dead Sprint and everything included. Here's the contents for Dead Sprint, and it's going to come with all of this stuff, along with some helpful inserts and a rule book, and of course the box itself. As you can see here, there's a ton of standees for the zombies. You're going to have the basic four zombies, you're going to have the bigger dudes, you're going to have the exploders, the crawlers over here, and they're all going to be used in the game as you progress. There's also the horde start and the horde uh, standee here, and then for every single player, you're going to have the player start location. For every player you want to have, just go ahead and simply put them into the game. Game. You're going to put the horde start and the start right next to each other so that way that the horde is in arm's reach of getting the survivors. You're also going to want to take this exit tile and depending on how brave you want to be you can put it 8 to 10 cards after um, into the straight deck. So you can choose 8 cards and then put it in or 10 cards or you can kind of choose however you want to do it but the rules suggest about 8 to 10 uh, and you can shuffle it up like that. So this card could go in, no, we'll just say put it in here somewhere. And um, then you're going to have also the corner decks here. These corner decks are just going to be able to be used if you want. You can simply put it down and it'll just give you a turn. Anyway, so those are the two decks, right? You got your character set up. Everybody is going to get one singular health. So all of our runners have one health. They can never carry more than two health or a unique type of item. Uh, so only one of each unique type of item, a plus one, a plus two, and a plus three. You've got these die here. You've got the horde die, which when you roll it, it will move the horde. And also whenever the horde hits something, he will increase speed. You've got the movement die for the players and the battle die for the players. You're also going to get a deck of cards here and this deck of cards is going to be drawn one at a time every on your turn. You can have up to three of them and they do certain things which we'll talk about. Uh, and that is a basic aspect of what you're going to get in Dead Sprint. Let's tell you how you play the game. So now you know how to set the game up. It's pretty simple. Everybody goes on the start tile. There's a zombie horde right behind you and you need to go forward. On your turn, you're going to draw a card from the deck. If you have more than three, you have to discard or play one. And if you don't, you can choose two. You can also have, we only have one health to start with, but you can have two total and you can have a bonus of one, two, and three uh, in front of you to use. You're also going to be rolling dice. Now the first die you're going to roll is a movement die, which is green. You're going to roll the die and see what happens. If it's a three, you move three, four, you move four and then if you come across zombies and you have to walk across them you will have to roll this attack die now zombies have numbers on them the basic zombie is going to be a four uh, the scariest zombie is a six you've got the exploders that are a one and then you've got the crawlers which take up two lanes that are a four when you roll the die if you don't hit what you need you're going to lose a health if you do hit what you need the zombie's going to die luckily for you though you're going to find axes and guns and all types of sorts of things so if you roll a three and you need a four you can use an axe to give you plus one to let you kill that nasty zombie. When your turn is over, the next player is going to get to go in turn order, and players are going to continue to need to move. When you are going onto a new tile, so there's no tile in front of you and you want to walk forward, you're going to draw a tile from either the corner deck or the straight deck, the two different options here, and then you're going to place the cards based on uh, what it says. So first of all, in this tile here, you're going to need to put four zombies. There's zombie, 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 zombie. One of them must be a special zombie, and you can put that zombie anywhere on the Z tiles. The rest of them can be the, they're going to be the basic zombies. Then you're also going to put down whatever it says. This one says a health and it says a plus two weapon of some sort. You're going to put those on those areas here. And sometimes you're going to run into um, a, a ton of stuff right here or even uh, spaces that you can't cross, right? So th there's like blockages and whatnot. The corner tiles work very simply as well. There's going to just be the fact that you can go uh, on one portion of the corner. So there's only two, two, and two. So it's really, really small, but allows you to turn the game a little bit and kind of squish people together, especially when you got a lot of players around 
running around the board. Now, if you cannot roll the high number you need, like a four and you roll a three and you also don't have a health, you're gone. Also, after everybody's turn, so after a full round is over, you're going to roll this horde die here. And if this little zombie, he, these zombies here, come over and stand on you, you've been eaten. Not only that, though, but if everybody decides that they don't want to kill zombies in this game, well, that's not very good because every time the horde adds a new zombie to the roster, basically as they walk over zombies, they're going to increase their speed by one. So this guy might go one, two for the horde die, but there's a zombie here, so he gets to go again. Oh, and another zombie here gets to move again, and they're going to catch you pretty quickly. Uh, that is the basic aspect of the game. Let me show you a couple turns of play the unfiltered way. Back to the game again, and as you see, it's all just like it was before, except I went ahead and put the end tile uh, about four or five tiles in to shorten the review portion, so you just get a good idea of how to play the game. Uh, these are the healths represent each of these characters. We'll just go down the line here, and these are going to be the healths representing them. Hopefully we can remember that. Pretty simple, though. This character is going to start, and he's going to draw a card. This card says trip a player. Uh, player of your choice must skip their next turn, and he can choose to play this, or he can save it, and it says be redeemed before you move. He's going to hold on to this card here. And then he's going to use his movement die. He rolled a two, so he's going to move one. He could choose to go here, or he could choose to go here. When he moves in this location, he's going to take a tile of his choice, and he's going to place it down. In which case, he's then going to add all the bonuses that the tile has on it. So there's a plus one there, plus one there, and another plus one over here, an adrenaline shot to let you roll, roll again if you get on that space, and a plus two gun. And now we got four zombies here. Well, since he's on this location, he probably doesn't want to put a scary zombie there, so he'll put a basic, basic ass, uh, basic zombie there. And then he's going to put a six over here. He's going to go ahead and put a, no, 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 four. Uh, a four there and then a four there. You have to at least have one special zombie on each of the tiles that have Z's on them. And then he is going to end his movement. He rolled with one, he moved two, he collects everything that he walked across. So he'll get this plus one here. So he can't have another plus one. He only have a plus two and a plus three. So then he's going to go on to the next, uh, next player's turn. Okay, so now we're on the next player's turn, and uh, yeah, by the way, you can have uh, two of any type of weapon upgrades. So you can have a plus one and a plus one, a plus one and a plus two, or plus uh, three plus three. So it's any any combination of that as well as two health. And I believe that adrenaline also is considered a health. So now we're on to the next player. We're going to go ahead and move to red here, and uh, we're going to use the special die. Come on, move four. He's also got his card. He gets to draw, kill any zombie uh, instantly. Redoom before rolling to attack. So he'll save this for now. Uh, he's going to move four. So he'll go one, two, three. He'll take this nice little axe here. And then he'll go four. And if he wants, he can use this. And I think he's going to go ahead and save this because he's got a plus one. So he'll roll his attack die here. He got a six that's going to remove the zombie. Nice. And he's now done. The next player is going to get to go. Oh, we move green. That's okay. We'll move red next. Uh, this guy here has got the uh, Necromancer Novice. Place a normal zombie on any unoccupied space. Uh, he'll save that for now. He will also roll his die. He's got a six. One, two, three, four, five. He'll take that. And then he'll go on to six. Let's go for another straight tile here. Yeah, uh, he doesn't want to do that. He's going to switch it, place like that. He'd much prefer a health, right? <laughs> so he's going to go ahead and take an extra health because he landed on that space. He gets to put the zombies how he wants. Maybe he'll put a four on this side because it blocks two spaces like that. And then this guy here, as well as a plus two. Let's see, where is the plus two over here? Here it is, and put it right there. All right, now we got a lot of stuff going on, right? And now we're going to move on to Yellow's turn. And Yellow is going to roll his movement four. One, two, three, and four. He likes that. He also got to draw his card. It says steal a weapon from a player of your choice. He's going to save this until somebody gets a good one, like a plus two or plus three. And then finally, green is going to get to roll. And he rolled a one. Poor, or sorry, a blue. <laughs> Poor blue. Blue's going to move just one space. He also got this card here. Steal another player's weapon of your choice. Uh, remember to draw your cards first. Don't be like me. Draw your cards first. Because sometimes they're going to say plus one movement, plus two movement, that kind of stuff. And depending on what they say is depending on what uh, you're going to be able to use them for. Sometimes it's before a movement or before an attack. And then, once again, you're going to continue and you're going to move this next player. And so you're going to be rolling. So whenever you roll against a zombie like this one, a six. So let's say that uh, he went through here 
and he, he rolled a six, right? Uh, he went to here, he has to roll. If he rolls a four or higher, it dies. If he rolls less than a four, he can try and boost it. So if he had a three and he uses plus one, he'd kill it. If, however, he could not boost it, maybe he rolled a one, then he's going to lose a health and be stunned. So he's not gonna be able to move there and it's gonna cost him a health. So you have to be very careful about that. Whenever people pick up these, they can choose to use them. It'll allow them to roll again. And as players continue to cross the board, they're gonna simply start placing tiles. You could choose to use corner pieces if you want. They're simply gonna look like this. And whenever you place a new tile, you're gonna simply be putting the zombies down, right? Now, the last thing you need to know too is after everybody has had their turn, before this guy actually moves again, this is going to move. You're gonna take this horde die here and you're gonna roll it. Yeah, three. Oh no, poor guy. And so it will go one, two, and three. If this ever hits any of the players, they're going to die. So let's say that everybody already went again and they did very, very poorly. They all rolled a zero. <laughs> this horde roll is gonna happen again. Another three, one, and two. This guy would be removed from the game instantly. And three, this guy would be removed. But also because this zombie is there, it's going to increase their movement to another plus one. Bam! And then, of course, another zombies were there, so bam! And it would keep going because you didn't kill the zombies, so you have to make sure to kill the zombies. But your objective is, uh, as I said before, to get to this exit space. If you can hit that exit space first, you're going to win. If you're the last person left alive, you're going to win as well. So if Orange was right here, he would be the last to live. And uh, also, remember to use these cards here. There's some great stuff you can use for stopping people's turns, uh, killing any zombies, place a normal zombie on a space, zombie necromancer, steal a player's weapon, add one to your movement, tons of cool cards in there. And that's the basic idea of the game. Pretty simple, right? Let's go up and talk about it. Okay, so a couple caveats. The first thing was, oops, when you die to a zombie or get hurt, if you lose a health from a zombie and you're still alive, you're gonna actually go back to the space you were currently on before you walked on that space. So you get stunned, but you're gonna move back one. Also, whenever you go to a new tile before actually moving to that next space, you're gonna simply flip over a tile card, look at it, decide, decide how you wanna orientate it, then place it, and then you can move. So it gives you a little more benefit. I mean, I kind of explained that but I didn't do it as well as I probably could have so just really to get to hone you guys in on that remember two different healths which you can use to stay alive and then two different power-ups remember your hand can also have power-ups as well it would be like this counts as a plus two weapon this counts as a plus one weapon and also let's talk a little bit about these guys here so of course you've got this exploder if it dies it blows up in a three by three range and everybody takes damage that is in that area the big guy here takes a six and then the four is just this little uh, crawler dude he just takes two spaces up and you can just decide how you want to place them for the two spaces. Uh, so that is the basic aspect of the game. Get to the end first or be the last person to die. Because it doesn't matter as long as everybody else gets eaten. You're, you're just going to be able to move across. <laughs> Mess with your neighbors. As long as you survive, that's all that matters. And when you're running from a bear, make sure you trip the person next to you. That's, that's how Dead Sprint works. So what do I think about Dead Sprint? Well, first of all, this game is a die rolling game that involves die rolling for attacking, right? And most people think, oh, that's, all, that's a lot of luck oriented aspects. That's the older style mechanics. But the cards give it some added interesting aspects, right? Because it's going to give you the ability to, to do bonus movement, to do bonus attacks, to be able to place zombies down to mess with your neighbors. And you get to decide how you want to place these things down and when. Also, the other aspect of strategy is how you place these tiles and where you're determining on how to go. Sometimes you're gonna be like, oh wow, like I've got three people next to me, right? I'm not so far ahead as where I, I trust myself. I'm gonna actually place a corner tile because corner tiles don't have, a, they have, they have the end, right? They're not gonna get to the end, but it'll increase the likelihood of people having to move farther and you can kind of trip them up by placing zombies that block two spaces and whatnot. It makes your neighbors have to work just that little extra and just that little bit extra in order to win the game, right? Um, but it's fairly simple, right? After everybody takes their turn, the horde is going to move. Another aspect is if you don't kill zombies and you just rush to the end, everyone is going to suffer for it because every time these guys eat a zombie or get the, a zombie added to their horde because that zombie wasn't killed, it's going to continue to move until it eats all of the players or it stops and there's no more zombies left. In a smaller player game, the board is going to fill up a lot more because there's less people killing zombies, which makes it an added bit of um, entertainment, right? Because you're super scared of the horde. When there is more players on the board, more zombies are more likely to die and the horde's probably not gonna get you as much but everybody is blocking the way of everybody else and there's a ton of mayhem. So there's just two different types of mayhem. Less players equals more crazy zombies and more 
dodging of the different locations you need to get to. And then a more players means that you're going to have to deal with not the zombies necessarily as much, but everybody else stopping you, maybe tripping you up. Trip a player, right? This is so mean. And in fact, what I would actually suggest for this one, instead of players losing their entire turn, they just simply can't move their, use their movement die. So they can actually still draw a card and that might give them a movement bonus, something like that. So you still get to play the game. I don't, I don't really like skip the turn cards. Uh, and in general, I don't uh, like as much the roll to move games, but this one is fun. It's quick and it's hilarious. I love the aspects of it. This, this fits the theme of the game. You feel like you're running away from zombies. You feel like you're trying to mess with the players next to you. It has that kind of bullets and teeth feel, another really cool zombie game that I like. And it is a different um, style game. It reminds me of those like the, the zombies with the exclamation marks, the, that style of a gameplay. But instead of like working together to go through the, the town, you're just simply trying to be the last person to survive. Overall, Dead Sprint is a really fun little um, maniacal game, a little deviousness added to it. And the artwork is pretty cool as well. I like all the different components of the game. I'm, and this is all a prototype, by the way. So I'm interested to see that how, how it all functions. I don't think it needs miniatures because of how much stuff is going on, but it couldn't hurt, right? Overall though, solid game. Definitely suggest it. If you don't mind roll to move style games and you don't mind the whole luck as, as to how you're going to be attacking, but which is more focused on the attacking of uh, using the cards and using the tile, much like the game Roadhog. Do go ahead and check out the Kickstarter description down below in the comment section if you want. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Subscribe. Subscribe. Do it. Have you done it? I don't believe you. As well as comment. Do you like zombie games? Is zombie games still cool? Do you still like the theme? Also go ahead and check out Dead Sprint. It's on Kickstarter in the description below if you're interested in trying to trip your neighbor, having them get eaten by zombies, and escaping yourself. Uh, you can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away the game Fires of Eidolon, and we're also giving away the... Oh, what is it called? Rising Sun Broken Token Organizer. If you're interested in winning those games, I definitely suggest going ahead and picking them out there in the site, as well as checking out friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. Two great guys, two great groups that do tons of blog posts as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to tripping you and making sure you guys get eaten by the zombies before me next time. <laughs>